All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to the session today. We'll be talking about what is VMware doing with OpenStack? I think some of us have heard that the VMware is the anti-OpenStack or OpenStack is the anti-VMware, and I'm here to dispel all those rumors, all those myths. Okay, so my name again is Trevor Roberts, Jr. I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Manager for OpenStack at VMware. And you may not think that I, have, I don't have a lot of work to do, but I'm doing quite a bit behind the scenes. I have my director of engineering here, uh, Mayan, who's also uh, interested to hear what your feedback might be about what we might be doing. So I'm gonna have a few slides to talk about what the product does and what our focus is with OpenStack. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a live-ish demonstration with an offline demo that I put together from my lab. So let's jump right into it. So first of all, VMware is committed to the OpenStack community. And what does that mean? Starting with the company that we acquired, NYSERA, that uh, became uh, VMware NSX, their product line in the company, first we began with the Neutron project. And as we saw how cool OpenStack was, uh, despite all of the media hype that was going on between the two platforms, we were actually contributing to the community afterwards too. So we contributed the Nova driver, the Cinder driver, the glance driver, and the work goes on and on. And we've actually come up with our own distribution of OpenStack that I'll talk to you about in the end. So our involvement by the numbers with the Metaka release, we have about 20 developers with 181 commits, 14,000 lines of code, and 1,593 patches reviewed. So we're fairly serious about working with the OpenStack community. We're not just here to take, we're also here to give back. And we actually have a couple uh, team members who are core reviewers on a number of the projects. So what is VMware Integrated OpenStack? We took the lessons that we learned from contributing to the community to actually put together our own distribution of OpenStack. Now when I say it's our distribution, uh, it's still open source OpenStack. We're not changing any of the code. The only thing that we do different is packaging how we deploy, uh, manage, and also upgrade your platform. That's right, we do automated upgrades too. And I can show you that depending on how much time I have left. So it starts with your existing vSphere environment. And then we have, how many of you are VMware administrators actually? Okay, so um, does everybody understand what an OVA is? It's kind of like an OVF, but a single file. Okay, so it's a big tarball that we deploy our package with and there's a plugin into the VMware administrative console called the web client. And from there, once that's deployed, we can have your whole OpenStack control plane deployed for you. And I'm definitely demonstrating how we do that. And last but not least, you need to know what's going on in your OpenStack cloud, right? You need to know your log messages, do some analysis. You need to see what your resource utilization is like. And so we have these tools at VMware that specialize in doing that and we have free plugins to be able to manage OpenStack clouds with those tools. So it's a fully validated architecture, and of course you can get single support from VMware if you purchase our optional support, because VIO is free, okay? VMware's giving away software, yes, VIO is free, right? So uh, imagine that. Um, so if you get our optional support, you can then get support, technical support for OpenStack all the way down to your infrastructure with the vSphere components. Okay, and with that, it's demo time. Okay, so what we see here is VMware's administrative console, known as the vSphere web client. And after I deploy VMware Integrated OpenStack, I now have a plugin in this console. So this is a brand new installation, and I want to deploy my OpenStack cloud. So I'll go ahead and click Deploy OpenStack and I'm gonna use an existing settings file that I saved from my last deployment. So first, I'm gonna enter my vCenter credentials. For a VMware environment, vCenter is the brains of the operation. This is where the OpenStack API codes will send their uh, calls to deploy an instance, create a network, uh, deploy or create a volume. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And then first, I'm going to select my management cluster that will run my OpenStack control plane. 
Then I have two networks that I want to assign. The management network where Nova, Cinder, and Neutron will communicate with each other. And then the API access network that users will access the cloud through. We're not letting users directly access that management network. So that API access network has a pair of HA proxy load balancers sitting on it. And then they have the virtual IP that we define for those load balancers and the DNS host name. Now I'm going to select my first compute cluster, and that's something that's different with using OpenStack on vSphere. You provision to a cluster instead of to individual hypervisors. And that's just because we want to give developers the option of utilizing VMware's capabilities like DRS and HA if they want to. We also assign storage in the form of data stores. If you're not familiar with VMware technologies, data stores are big buckets of storage. They're just a one-to-one -one mapping of a disk array LUN. So you can see here, we're just clicking checkboxes. We're not uh, configuring drivers or any of that because vSphere makes that or abstracts that for you in the background. And then we have uh, our Glance data stores for storing our images. And we configure neutron networking. If you have a simple deployment, fairly small, you just want flat networking, you can go with the virtual distributed switch. However, if you want those advanced neutron capabilities like load balancing as a service, security groups, overlapping tenant IPs, then we recommend VMware NSX. Can you choose whatever you want? Can you choose another provider? No, because this is based on VMware technologies. However, if you, oh, the question is, can you use other network virtualization technologies? And the question is, with, the answer is, with VMware integrated OpenStack, you use our network virtualization, but if you're using another uh, distribution, you can use our drivers with them, and then you use whatever technologies they use. I'm, I'm asking about using a particular VNS. I've got a, I've got a Cisco or, or a VNS. I, I have that choice, right? Do you not have that choice? Okay, no. With VMware integrated OpenStack, no, but you can work with other distributions, and they use our drivers, so you can configure it that way. And next, I choose my Keystone database uh, authentication, whether the local database or Active Directory and I configure my syslog target. We have a phone pro home program for sending statistics. It's all anonymous, I assure you. And if we scroll down, we see the control plane as it's going to be deployed. So we have high availability built into the system from the ground up. So a pair of load balancers, a pair of controllers, three database servers because we're running Galera <laughs> cluster, and so on. So I go ahead and click Finish. And at this point, uh, VMware Integrated OpenStack is compiling all the answers that we provided into Ansible playbooks that will be used to configure all of the virtual machines that make up that control plane for their various roles. <coughs> so I go ahead and refresh, and now I have my OpenStack cloud up and running. For the administrators, this is the view that they see. Uh, for the users, though, they will be looking at just straight up OpenStack. They'll be able to use Horizon, they'll be able to use the OpenStack APIs and the OpenStack CLIs. There is no change to the user experience, even though you're using our distribution. Uh, are there any questions? Quick time check. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I mean, like, if I come for this interface and create an instance, yes. is it managed by the OpenStack uh, piece or is it managed by the vSphere? It's managed by both. So here's how that works. Uh, so when you create the inst oh sorry, let me repeat the question. There you go, Trevor. I, I'm a little rusty. Sorry, guys. Okay, so the question is, if I create an instance, is it managed by OpenStack or is it managed by vSphere? And the answer is, it's both, because you have, well, preferably, only touch it through OpenStack. But in vCenter, you'll be able to see the VM. There will be a slight change to the virtual machine. It'll have a different logo. If you try to edit it directly, it will say, uh, warning, this is a managed VM, and don't touch it uh, manually. And actually, if you click on the VM, you'll be able to see all of the OpenStack metadata created as vSphere tags. So someone ha would have to willfully want to take your cloud offline to go through all those steps to do that. And if you have that kind of person on your IT team, I think you have bigger problems than direct access in vSphere. But yes, it, it's in the Nova database. Uh, you run the OpenStack API calls on it just like you normally would with any other uh, infrastructure piece. In your 
your config uh, there, I didn't see anywhere it said how many Nova nodes. Does it use right. all the uh, VMs in a cluster? Okay, so. So the question is, um, you didn't see any configuration of how many hosts in the cluster to be used with Nova? Right. Okay, so the answer to that is make the cluster as big as you want for OpenStack to manage. So if you only want two servers in that compute cluster, only put two servers in that cluster. If you want 10, put 10. But it yeah, will use all of them. it will use everything in the cluster. So you have to create those first. You have to create the clusters first. You have to create your create networks VMs. first. Sorry? No, you don't create the VMs first. You create just the cluster, you create your networks, and I think those are the only items you need to create in advance. Oh, so a VIO will create all the, the neutron node and the Nova node and... Oh, you mean for the control plane? Yes. Okay, so the follow-up question is, is VIO also making the control plane VMs? Yes, it clones uh, from an Ubuntu 14.04 template, and then Ansible is going to run its playbooks to configure the roles. Okay. But, but where do you say how many? How many in your Nova cluster? Okay, I'll follow up with you afterwards because a lot of follow-up questions. There's more questions here. Yes? Um, for the data stores, does it support uh, Vvol and vSAN data stores? Good question. The question is, for the data stores, are Vvol and vSAN supported? Um, Vvol support is on the roadmap, but we definitely support VMFS, NFS, and vSAN. No issues. Question? Yeah. But do I have, can I just get away with like a vSphere standard or do I have to get be realized and everything else? That's, like That's a good question that you have. Um, so we have some differences in the licensing that are coming up afterwards, but in, as it currently stands, you just need your standard um, vSphere Enterprise Plus because we need the distributed switch. The vRealize components are optional. I only put that up there just in case you want to have reporting on your cloud because OpenStack doesn't come with reporting, right? Did I, ask, did I say the question? Did. No, I didn't. The question is, uh, what kind of purchase do I need to make in the infrastructure to get the cloud up and running? Do I need the entire vRealize suite? And the answer is no, uh, you do not. But Enterprise Plus. But Enterprise Plus. Right. And we have some changes to licensing that are coming up. Um, if you give me your card, I can get in contact with you afterwards and we can talk more about it. Uh -huh. But what about drivers for all the various components, you know, Cinder and, you know, and integrating with you know, all the millions of things that are out there? You know? Sure. So uh, are you talking about storage specifically? Yeah, storage or anything else. But how extensible is this? Okay. So um, how extensible is VMware integrated OpenStack? And guys, I'm sorry, time check again? Yeah. Um, I'm out of time? Getting close. All right, this will be the last question, and everybody else can follow me afterwards, and I'll answer your questions. So how extensible is VMware Integrated OpenStack? There's two um, answers to that. First of all, in the area of drivers, specifically around storage, remember that I said uh, vSphere abstracts storage management. So you never have to configure uh, which array that you're using, uh, what the driver is, and all that information. You don't have to go to the config files. Uh, since uh, we do a lot of R&D, with the various manufacturers, we have uh, vSphere abstracting that storage management away from you. All you have to do is tell it which LUN to use, and then v VMware Integrated OpenStack can pick that up. And there's also extensibility in the form of other OpenStack projects. For example, Database as a Service. We're working with Sora to get a reference architecture to show you, OK, we don't install Database as a Service by default, but you can work with Sora and with us to get that working with VMware Integrated OpenStack. Okay, and I know there's more questions. I'm not avoiding them, so I'll stick around to answer them. Thank you guys for your time.